Come fill my cup. Come fill my cup. Let it overflow. Come fill my cup. Come fill my cup. Let it overflow. Come fill my cup. Come fill my cup. Let it overflow. Let it overflow in love. Come fill my cup. Come fill my cup. Let it overflow. Come fill my cup. Come fill my cup. Let it overflow. Come fill my cup. Come fill my cup. Let it overflow. Let it overflow with love. Amazing grace. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. That saved the wretch. That saved the wretch like me. I once was lost. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught. Grace that taught my heart to see. And grace my fears. Grace my fears really. How precious did that grace of The hour I first believed The Lord has promised His words my hope He wills my chill As long as life endures So fill my cup So fill my cup Fill my cup. Fill my cup. Let it overflow with love. Amazing grace. That saved the wretch. I once was lost. I was blind, but now I see. Those grace that talk. And grace my fears. The hour I first believed The Lord has promised His words my hope He will my shield So fill my cup. So fill my cup. Let it overflow. So fill my cup. Let it overflow. Let it overflow with love. So fill my cup. So fill my cup. So fill my cup. Let it overflow. Let it overflow with love. Amazing grace. So fill my cup, so fill my cup, let it overflow. So fill my cup, so fill my cup, let it overflow. Let it overflow with love. So fill my cup, so fill my cup, let it overflow. So fill my cup, so fill my cup, only he can. So fill my cup, so fill my cup, let it overflow. Let it overflow with love. So 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 fill my cup. Let me know you believe it. Let it all. So fill my cup. So fill my cup. Let it overflow. So fill my cup. So fill my cup. Let it overflow. Let it overflow with love. So fill my cup. So fill my cup. Let it overflow. So fill my cup. My cup. Y'all gotta hear what you're singing now, man. So fill my cup. So fill my cup. Let it overflow. Let it overflow. Fill my cup. Lord, 
sofreu uma cama, 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 Please be seated. Amen. Amen. And good morning, family. Good morning. My name is John Walker. I'm one of the brothers that serve here at the River Sea Christian Ministries. And I want to take the time to welcome you all. Everybody, who hand of applause. Welcome. <laughs> We want to welcome the visitors. We also want to welcome all of the members and those who are watching online. In Sunday school this morning, we learned about how important the body is. How we meet each other's need and how we are to be there for each other. And we just sung a song about come fill in my cup. God uses everybody in here and all around the world to fill our cups. So I'm going to read a scripture about how God provides for us. It's Mark chapter 3. And we're going to look at verse 34 and 35. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. So as I look around this room, I see many mothers. I see many brothers. I see many sisters. God is good all and all the time. God is good. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you so much for the body of Christ. God, you have met so many needs and you continue to meet all of our needs. Whether it be a stressful day, Lord God, or a happy day, Lord God, you always provide for us. And God, I just want to thank you. We want to thank you for that, Lord God. So please be with us throughout this service. We love you, God, and we praise and worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. amen family. So the next song that we're going to sing is a song before communion. And it is number two in your blue song books, if you need that for reference. And the title is, I Give Myself Away. And it is coupled with, Here I Am to Worship. I give myself away I give myself away So you can use I yeah. I give myself away I give myself away I give myself away So you can use I give myself away. I give myself away to you, God. I give myself away so you so you can you I give myself away. I don't belong to me no more, Lord. I give myself away so you so you. Lord, my life is in your hand. Lord, Lord, I'm longing to see your desires, your desires revealed in me. I give, I give myself away. I give myself away. I give myself away so you, so you can use me. Can use I give, give myself away. Lord, I love you. I love you. 
I give myself away so you, so you can use take me. My heart. Take my heart. Take my life. Take my life as a sacrifice. As a living sacrifice. All my dreams. All my dreams. Every plan. All my plans, Lord, I place them Lord, in Your hands. I place them in Your hands. I give, I give myself away. I give myself away to You, God. I give myself away. So You, so You can use me. Use I give me. myself away. Whatever you want me to do, I give myself away. So you, so you can you? I give myself away. Everything I have, I give to you, Lord. I give myself away. So you. Can use me, my life. My life is not my own. To you, to you I belong. I give myself. I give myself. I give myself to you. My life, my life is not. My life is not my own. To you I be. To you I belong. I give myself away. I give myself. I give myself to you. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself to you. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I. To say that you're my God, you're all together. Love me, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Here I am, here I am to worship, here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're my God. We're all together lovely. You're lovely. All together worthy. You're worthy. All together wonderful to me. One more time. Here I am. Here I am. Worship your name. Here I am to bow, bow down. down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, Lord, lovely. all together worthy, and you're worthy. all together wonderful to me. Good morning, church. Good morning. <laughs> uh, my name is Nasir Williams. I'm one of the brothers here that serve at the River City Christian Ministries. Yes. And I've been uh, given the opportunity to uh, do the uh, communion portion. Uh, I just want to thank the leadership for allowing me to be able to uh, uh, share my thoughts. Amen. And so I'm just going to jump on in in uh, Mark chapter 14, uh, verse... I'm sorry, verse 18 through 26. Or, I'm sorry, 17 verse 26, or through 26. Uh, when evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table, eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. 
They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely you don't mean me. It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man, the Son of Man will go just as, as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. He said, he said to them, Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And, you know, in, in talking about this and in, in, in reading the scripture and talking about communion, um, you know, I thought about, you know, what, what makes a memorable gift? What makes a good or memorable gift? Um, you know, definitely the thought. The thought always counts. Um, it's something with a high cost, whether it be financially or something about your time. Um, it, has, it has to meet a desired or a specific type of need that that other person that the, that you're, that the giver is, or that the given is having. Um, and every time you think about the gift, it brings back a moment or, a, or, or an idea of joy, something that, that you know, really makes you happy, a memorable gift. And no gift can outmeasure, or can outmeasure the weight of what Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection meant for us. So when we do communion, it, it is a, a memorable gift. It is a gift that we need to remember every time because it, he gave his life for our sins. He was blameless. There was nothing, there, he was innocent, an innocent man. And in Mark, uh, in Mark 14, uh, verse 24, it, it, said, it explained that the, the meal that they had was his covenant. That, that was it. That was, that was what we are doing. But that, it, it isn't just a meal. It is our, our relationship with him that we're starting. Um, <clears throat> he, he paid the price. He paid the price, and we're, we're honoring that. And so the communion symbolizes his death. It, it, it symbolizes our, our sins on the cross. It symbolizes everything that we, that we did to him, that I did to him. And so every time, every time I, 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 I truly want to, want to make sure that I'm remembering, this is, this is what I did, God, and, I, and this is what you brought me out of. And uh, with that, we're, uh, uh, can I get the ushers up to come up? Amen. Amen. And uh, we're going to pray. Uh, God, thank you for this day, everything you do for us, God. Thank you for uh, just allowing us to be here. Thank you for just this time that, uh, that you've given us to be able to uh, uh, remember, remember your son dying on the cross for us, God, and, and being able to... Uh, to just experience the salvation that he brought, God. I thank you for all that, God. I thank you for just, um, just being able to, to say that, that I can be saved because of your son, God. I pray that, that as we uh, drink the juice that represents his uh, blood uh, and eat the bread that represents his body, God, that we can truly remember uh, his sacrifice, that we could truly remember that you are God. You are everything to us, God. I thank you for all that you do for us, and I thank you for this day again. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. I am Tremont Slade, one of the brothers that serve here at the River City Christian Ministry. Amen. We have reached a portion of our service where we will be tithed. Could the ushers please come forward? Please bow your head. Dear God, thank you for waking us up this morning and getting us here safely to worship your name. I ask that you have our hearts and minds open when it pertains to giving today. We are so grateful for all of the one of the things that you give us and grant us to have. We are nothing without you. We wouldn't have any of these things. Um, I pray that you bless this offering today. Um, I pray that you're with Mr. Dan when he gives his wonderful message and that our hearts and minds are open and we just receive the word that he gives us. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Round of applause. Amen. <laughs> I have known Dan for a while. 
one of the elders down at the West Palm Beach Church. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, we're going to sing all night before he brings up the message. Amen. Uh, it is not in the song books, but it is pretty easy to follow along with. And even if you are trying to figure out what to sing, just yell amen. Amen. And clap. Amen. amen. amen.
did you call and I called on the Lord did you call and I called on the Lord did you call and I called on the Lord did you call and I called on the Lord did you call and I called on the Lord did you call and I called on the Lord did you call and I called on the Lord did you call and I called on the Lord did you call and I called on the Lord did you call and I called on the Lord did you call and I called on the Lord did you call and I called on the Lord did you call and I called on the Lord Y'all gotta understand what you're saying, right? Did you call him? Did you call him? I called on the Lord. Did you call him? Did you call him? I called on the Lord. Did you call him? Did you call him? I called on the Lord. Did you call him? Did you call him? I called on the Lord. Did you call him? Did you call him? I called on the Lord. Did you call him? And I called on the Lord all night long, and I wouldn't let go. Bless my soul. Well, thank you, Jesus. That he came <laughs> it is great to be in the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. I'm just so thankful to be up here with Dan and also one of our other deacons, Tim. Uh, they were in, they were in Atlanta back in the day. Yeah. And so and Royal, yeah. we're all together, and then God brought them all here. Yeah. And uh, help us plant this church and get it going. And, and Dan went off, became an elder, and coming back to preach the word of God for us. Amen. 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 I, I think we got to thank our wives, Dan. I, I think because we uh, think if we it wasn't for our wives, we'd never met each other. That's right. You know, that's, right. <laughs> that's the truth and the fact. <laughs> uh, uh, Veronica lived with Vanita uh, growing up. Uh, how old were you then, Veronica? About that's 15, 16? 16 and 17 years old, you know, now we're all in our 60s now, so yeah. hey, that, what an incredible story there. I remember when I started dating, a, a true story, I ain't lying, tell you the truth. <laughs> true story, I ain't even know, I gotta get, tell on Veronica too. True, <laughs> true story, uh, I remember when I fell in love with Vanita, and her and Veronica was always hanging out, always hanging out. And so I fell in love with Vanita, and I said, man, this is who I'm gonna marry, I, I gotta ask this woman to date, we date, and then one day, we was getting ready to go on our date, and I'm picking Vinita up. I look behind me, there's Veronica. I said, is this something new? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm taking Vinita out on a date. And so Veronica and I got, we, we had little words for each other in love, and she was letting me know that's my best friend. I'm like, well, this gonna be my woman. <laughs> so best friend or not, she's mine. <laughs> You gonna have to be on the other side for a little bit and go. And I, I never forget my wife come between both of us. To my look, I love both of y'all. Can y'all just get along? <laughs> but Veronica's been one of my best friends ever since. I man, I love you so much, Veronica. Yeah. Uh, you've been a great friend of my wife all these years. Mama mm. Fryson love you like she's your she, you're her own. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I just appreciate and respect you so much. Yeah. So grateful. I enjoy. I mean, we're together here. About eight years, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. I really enjoyed those times. We was in yeah. Dallas together yeah, for a yeah, good little while. Yeah. You know, and, I, I'm, and I'm just, and then we was in Gainesville. So <laughs> I, I'm just so grateful what God has done and brought us full circle like this. Amen. To have you here. I cannot introduce Dan without introducing you. <laughs> I love you, sister. Amen. Give me a hug, Amen. man. Shoot, I need a hug. <laughs> My sister in the Lord. Oh, man. And Dan, I just cannot thank you enough for our years together. Amen, bro. Amen. Been my partner, yeah. advisor, uh, just a great friend. You have to. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. For you gonna make me cry for the message? Yeah, now, yeah, bro. Uh, yes, I. We, we, we supposed to stay. We supposed to stay I'm, fired I'm, up. I'm trying to stay see, strong. We supposed to stay fired we up. We can do it. Okay. Right. I don't know. <laughs> okay. But I'm, you know, just um, here with your family to have them here. Yeah. Mm. I hadn't seen some of them in a long time. Yeah. Mama Fraser, where are you? I just I love you. You know. mm -hmm. Donna, I just love you yeah. and miss you and great to see you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then your family. I, yeah. That's I, Karen man, uh, back there. Karen. That's Karen? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And Joy. And Joy. David Look and at Jewish. this now. Yeah. I'm just so <laughs> grateful 
to see each and every one of you. Mm -hmm. uh, you got an awesome brother. Thanks for allowing him to serve in God's kingdom mm -hmm. and, uh, and being such support. Amen. You know, I'm very grateful for each and every one of you. Amen. Amen. And Dana, you, uh, you just mean so much to me, and I'm so proud of what you've done. And out in, uh, where you at now? <laughs> That's a fair question, because yeah. we've, we've been different places. All over the world. You're in Palm Beach. We're in yeah, Palm Beach. Palm Beach. <laughs> you know, and, uh, uh, and you retired, yeah. and I'm so excited about that. Amen. Thanks for coming back to Amen. encourage us, to inspire us, Amen. to build us up. Amen. Amen. And uh, you've been there for me through my both knee replacement, both hip replacements. Mm. I'm still in therapy. Uh, but I'd be back in the saddle next week now. Yeah, I, I, know, I know. Hey, If I don't hurt myself today so far. They, they, they can rebuild him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so grateful, brother. I just Dad, love you so much. I love you too. Brother. And appreciate you uh, loving me and my family. Man. Come here. Man. I appreciate it. God did it. God did it. God did it. And I'm going to ask uh, our brother Tim, one of our deacons, to Pray for you. Pray for the message. And the next voice you hear will be Dan Fraser. Amen. 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 Let's go to God in prayer. <clears throat> Father, thank you for this day, God. Thank you for this opportunity we have to hear uh, your words, God, to come through uh, Dan. God, we pray for Dan and for just the spirit to lead him, God, for us to be able to hear what we need to hear. We look forward to hearing your words, God, and applying them to our lives, God. Thank you for this family and body of believers. We're grateful, and we want to worship you and follow you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, okay. Put that down here. Okay. You got your mic down. Amen. 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 Well, River City? Hey, hey. hey I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, um, uh, you know, I want to... Um, you know, Mark was expressing you know, just our relationship um, with him and, uh, and Vanita and me and Veronica and just, um, God, just the years that we, uh, God allowed us to be together. And I remember him, even when Veronica and I, when we, we first got married, I would say, you know, because we would talk to Mark and Vanita, they were in Dallas at the time. And I was like, you know, I believe that one day we're going to be together in the same place making disciples. Because I'd hear stories of how God was using them. And I was like, man, that's, that's what I want to be doing. I want to be out there giving my life. Uh, for God and and then God made that happen. Yeah. See, you, you, be careful what you say. <laughs> be careful because God is listening. And all I know is that we found ourselves sooner or later in Dallas with them. And then when I got there, uh, Mark says, "Okay, uh, Dan, how's your Spanish?" <laughs> then he <laughs> then he put me in with the with the Spanish speaking ministry. Which, which hey, you know what? I, I'm not great at Spanish, but you know I know the Word of God. Come on, man. and the Word of God breaks down all barriers, even language. <laughs> And we were in there, and we were, we were so loved um, in that ministry, and, and, um, and just watch God continue to grow it. You know, and then um, exploded. it exploded. God was doing his thing. And then we came back, and we were um, allowed to be, you know, we're in Jacksonville. We were together in Jacksonville. And then um, just being here and watching the River City. Um, I'm looking at you all this morning when I look, and you are answering the prayer. Yeah. I mean, me and Mark and Saul would walk on the beach yeah. praying to God of what he could do. You remember those days, God? Yeah, we were pounding the beach praying. And um, so when I looked this morning, I just see the answer of prayer. But then I know that we were talking, we were a mission team. Remember back in the day? Yeah. We call ourselves a mission team. Yeah. But see, the mission team is still being built. That's right. Yeah. It's, not it's not done not yet. It's yeah. not done. Sure. You know, and so, the, so, that, so let's, let's stay on mission. Come on, man. Come on, man. But, but let's, let's get into it, okay? Oh. I, I, want, I, I didn't come here to talk about me this morning. Oh. I want, I want to come here and talk about Jesus. So that's what we're talking about today, right? Isn't that what you came to hear about today? Okay. Well, let's go into it. Let's go in. I'm gonna, let me say a quick prayer here. Father, we thank you so much for how you love us. Thank you for all the brothers and sisters here this morning, Father, for their hearts to be here, God. And, and God, just things that you're doing in their lives right now. Father, I pray you continue to guide us, Father. God, if anybody here is having a difficult time going through something, Father, just, God, we know that you're with us, Father. You will never fail us, Lord. I, I pray, God, let our hearts this morning, let us, let us get into your word, Father, and let your word change us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let, let's go into uh, Luke chapter 5. Amen. Okay. And I'm going to give you my point in a minute, but I'm going to go to, I'm going to appeal to Jesus first. So here we're in Luke chapter 5. And, and uh, one thing I want you guys to know, Mark Harris is a gospel preacher. 
you know. Now, I never knew what that was till we were having lunch with, uh, with uh, an old evangelist one day, him and Vanita and Veronica. And he asked Mark, so what are you, what are you talking on at church? What are you? And Jesus said, well, I'm, I'm talking about Jesus. I'm coming right from the gospel. So he said, oh, you, so you're an old time gospel preacher. He said, I know that because gospel preachers move mountains because they're using the word of Jesus. And so what I'm seeing here is I'm seeing a mountain that God moved for River City to be here. Amen. Amen. But uh, here in, in, uh, in Luke chapter five, starting at verse one, it says, one day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people who were crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were going washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little uh, from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. Verse 4. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And then they came and, and, and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw, saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Let me stop there. Now, my first point is when Jesus asks you to do something, just do it. Come on now. Just do it. Okay. You, 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 guys, wearing the, you guys wear the Nikes, right? I know my young brothers and sisters here with the Nike. You know that little logo on there? Well, that just well just be Jesus. Just, just, just do it. You know, and the reason I'm saying this is because, you know, even today, there are probably... Things on your heart that God's been telling you for maybe for days, for weeks, for months, maybe even for years. That he's telling you, you need to go ahead and change this. You need to go ahead and do this. Just do it. Don't, don't question God. Just do it. Now, I'm saying this because, because I don't know what it may be. But I know if somebody listened this morning, you, it may be something. I've had things in my life. And the reason I'm saying this is because... You know, Jesus here, he saw Peter and, you know, Jesus, keep in mind, he was one of us. Right. See, that's one thing. He is our Lord and, cre and, and Christ and our Savior, but he became one of us. That's right. So there's nothing that you're going through right now that he was not familiar with. Nothing. You know, if you have fear of something, okay, he knew what it was like to be fearful. You're discouraged. He knew what it was like to be discouraged. He knew what it was like when you had issues with family. He knew, I mean, just think about it, whatever it is you're going through. He knew what sin was. He didn't sin, but he knew the things that we're challenged with, that we're challenged with. So he was one of us. So when he says, when he saw Peter here, and he realized, he knew Peter had been out there fishing all day and all night. And he said, um, Peter, just um, try the other side. Try something different. Are you willing to try something a little different? See, we all know our way of doing things, right? Are you willing to listen to Jesus and try something just a little different? He didn't tell people to stop fishing. He said, just throw your net on the other side over here. If you're a fisherman, okay, be a fisherman. But do it just a little differently. You know? And then what happened when he did that? Peter, the net was so full, he had to call his friends up. Hey, come help me. There was overflow for what he had done. So what I'm trying to say this morning is whatever it is that you're dealing with in your life, just do it. Listen to the Lord. Don't, don't let fear, don't let whatever it may be stopping you. Because, you know, if something's stopping you, it's the other guy. You know, the Bible tells us that fear, that doesn't come from God. That's right. That's, right. that's not from God. On, that's, that's another spirit. So if you're fearful of something, you're discouraged about something. And then another thing is, you know, I was, when I came in this morning and hear Daryl giving his message, and I was like, okay, Daryl, that, that must be the spirit of God. Because, you know, another thing that you can use here when, you, when you're going through those things is you got one another. That's right. That's right. You, you got help. You don't have to deal with this alone. Yeah. You know, right. have, you, have you tried telling somebody? Yeah, come on. I've been a part of so many congregations where we would see stuff happen to families. I was like, man, I, I never knew. Mm -hmm. You know, we all come to church and we can't read faces. That's right. We can't read situations, you know. But if we talk Amen. in our fellowship, yes. in, in our fellowship, 
there are so many miracles that God does in our fellowship. When we're talking with one another, that's when it's done. That thing you've been praying about, God may say, hey, your prayer is going to be answered when you speak with Vanita this morning. Or you speak with Daryl, or you speak with Sarah, or you start... Because maybe they're the ones that God was like, they're going to give you your answer. Come on. Maybe they've been through it. Maybe they know what, you, what you're going through. But they're going to, maybe God put them there to help you get through it. Amen. But you know what the evil one does? Wait, 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 where's Sierra at? Come, can you come here to Sierra? Now, we used to do this a lot when I, when I taught Sunday school, Daryl. Let me show you what I did. <laughs> I, I put Sierra and her sister, put them to work. <laughs> See? See, nobody comes here for free. Everybody works. <laughs> everybody works. We, don't, we put everybody to work. Now, okay, so let's say now, okay, Sierra, uh, let's see, I need one more. Brittany, you come up. Brittany, see, Brittany's in town. Man, look at that. Okay. Now, let's say Sierra has a need. Brittany know what it is. Now, you stand here for a second, Brittany? That's actually true. Yeah, yeah, I, see? Now, and if I was the evil one, my job would be to like, oh, man, I got to make sure they don't meet. So I'm going to be like, Brittany, come over here. Because uh, they're getting close. Oh, wait a minute. There's something else you need to be doing. I know you need to talk to her, but man, it's very important you do this. And then I'll be over here, Sierra. What? You don't want to hang out with her. You know, she got, she got things going on. Why, why you want to spend time with her? She's not going to be to help your problem. Don't even listen to her. See, that's what the evil one does. Okay. So that, is, there, is, that, is that that way in, in this congregation? Are there relationships here that, think about it. If there's somebody that you're like, man, I don't want to spend time with them, Pray. Because there might be something to that. Yeah. It might be Satan say, man, now you guys come back together. When they meet together, there's power. Yes. <laughs> there's power. Prayer answer. God has done it. Like, and Satan's like, oh, no. You know, yeah. that's how we, we got to look at it. Yeah. That, that heart of, of being here and being in the body that Daryl talked about. Yeah. This is what we need to have. Give him a hand. Yeah. All right. It's, it's like old times, right? Yeah. Right. Old times. But, but yeah, but we, we got we to gotta, our relationships, brothers and sisters, because God has given those to us. Don't take it for granted. Um, we, don't know, we never know how long God's going to keep us together. That's right. And, and, I, and I guarantee you, the people around you, it's not a, it's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence to the city you live in, the people that you go to church with, the people in your Bible studies. God does that. He determines the time and place that we're on part of the earth. God determines the time and the place. Yeah. The Bible, didn't the Bible say that there? Yeah, it said that in the Bible. And, and, and another thing is, is that we live in a time in our world, worst time in, in the history of the world. Right. But we That's live right. in. Yeah. That's right. God chose that. He chose for you to be a Christian, to be a disciple, now in the worst time in the history of the world. Why would he do that? Because you have the hearts to live it. Yes. You have the hearts to, to love. Come on, God. You have the faith to do it. Yes. You know, God doesn't make mistakes like that. Come on, God. But the only thing is, will you do it? Mm. Uh, will, are you going to do it? That's the question. And Jesus says, just do it. Mm. Just do it. Trust him. He, because he's already given you the power to do it. So just do it. He's already given you the power. He wouldn't ask you to do it if he didn't already, if he didn't want to ask Peter to do this, if he didn't think that he's already given him the power to do this. That's right. So just know that. Amen? Amen. Well, I can, spend, I can spend all day on that, but I got to get to my next point. I got I to I get to the next point here. All right, now, you know, as we, so we, we, we talk about how we got to just do it. So how do we get to that point where we, you know, we just, we finally get motivated to go just do it? Uh, turn your Bibles to, uh, we're going to be here in uh, Matthew chapter 7. See, I want to try to be like Mark. I'm going to be a gospel preacher today. Amen. Matthew chapter 7. And I'm going to read here in verse uh, 21 to 23. Okay. You know, I'm going to, hey, can somebody read that for me? I'm going I'm I'm to put you guys to work. Who wants to read that? Okay, brother, can you read that for me? Okay. So Matthew. Go the oh, they got to go to the mic. Okay. I'm, oh, I got you. Well, you know what? Let, let me go ahead and read it so that way. I apologize. Okay. So we'll. So we'll be in Matthew 21. And uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Matthew chapter 7. I'm sorry. Matthew chapter 7. I apologize. And 21 to 23. All right. It says here, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven. 
Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy your name and in your name drive out demons in your name, perform many miracles? Then then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evildoers. Now, this is Jesus speaking. OK, you look down there because this is in the red writing. Is it a red writing in your Bible? So when it, I was told when it was red, it's Jesus. OK, so, so it's in red. But, you know, who is he talking to here? He is talking to people who thought they were doing what was right. It was a man. We worked miracles. And so they saw miracles. Maybe they were people who went to church. Maybe there were people who were in Bible studies. They were religious people. But Jesus says, away from me, you evil doers. I do not know you. So what this tells me is that all those acts and things that we do, if you're not doing it, doing what God asked you to do, guess what? Jesus says, I never knew you. Come on now. You did all those things. Why are you doing all that stuff? Why are you coming to church Sunday after Sunday and, and midweeks and Bible talks and, and group meetings and all these things, all these years, sharing your faith, but your heart was in the wrong place? You were not doing what God asked you to do. See? And that's what Jesus, and then these people are like, they were surprised. What do you mean? And what I'm trying to, trying to get to this morning, brothers and sisters, is that this is my second point. See, because, you know, to know Jesus, Jesus is the word of God. He is the word. And if you don't know the word, you don't know Jesus. Okay? If you don't know the word, you don't know Jesus. Now, remember when we were studying the Bible, I think it was in uh, Acts chapter uh, 17, uh, verse 10, 11, where it says how the Bereans, they eagerly examine the scriptures every day to see what Paul said was true. Well, you got to eagerly examine Jesus every day. Every day. Yeah. Every day. Every day. See, see, that's how you got to live. See, otherwise, you could very well be doing stuff and not be doing what God called you to do. You know? I mean, would that not be shocking? Lord, we did all that stuff. You know, but are you doing what God's called you to do? And when I, and when I look at the scripture here, I think about, you know, just the, uh, the many things I've done over the years. But how it was because of me praying about it and me getting in the word and also making sure that I did not let my relationship with God go stale. Right. See, I didn't let my relationship with Jesus go stale because, see, that can happen. Yeah. You know, when, when, when you, yeah. you know, when, again, when we're, we're humans, right? So when you're doing stuff over and over again, you get that point where it's like, man, I don't feel like reading my Bible today. Yeah. But what that really means, I don't feel like talking with Jesus today yeah. because I got somewhere else to be. I got something else to listen to. I got something else that I think that's more important. But see, see that's what happens when we, when we go. So what we have to do is we got to find ways to make sure this stays true and real to us. That's right. See, it should be a zeal about us wanting that's to get right. to the word of God. Yeah. It should be like, man, I want to. I hunger for it. Yes. Now, now, I know there are different ways of how each of us learn the scriptures. So I, I know there are people who may have to have learning disabilities and different things that may make them feel like, um, you know, I don't really want to get in and read so much. But we live in a day and time, guess what, where God gives us so many ways yes. to get in his word. Yes. Veronica and I spoke with a sister in Palm Beach where she, um, she said, you know, um, she has a, um, you know, some speech, um, speech uh, literacy and things. She said, but, what, but she sings. And what she says is that the way I learn the scriptures is through song. She said, I sing the songs and it becomes real to me. And I was like, wow. She learns the Bible through song. And then we got tapes and videos and all these different things. See, you know, they even probably have like Snoop Dogg doing Acts chapter <laughs> whatever. <too. laughs> you probably could find it out there. But, but what I'm trying to say is that you <laughs> whatever, whatever. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you, what I'm trying to say is that we live in a day and time where the word of God, we can get to it if we want to. That's right. If you, if you, want, if you want it. So it's no, it's no excuse for us not knowing Jesus. That's right. There's That's no right. excuse. And, and even though when, you, when you study the Bible, you know, even try doing this. Um, we, live in, we can Google things, right? Yeah. So yeah. I Google things about myself. If I'm dealing with something, struggling with something, let me Google and find out what scriptures yeah. that talk about what I'm dealing with. That's right. So I can directly approach that. Because that's the thing that hinders my relationship with Jesus. 
See, see, we have no excuse, right? Yeah. Now, I, everybody else forgot. I got my phone here. I usually yeah. have my Bible, but I got my, so I got everything here. I got my notes, everything that's right here before me, so I have no excuse. That's right. So, eagerly, so my second point, you got to eagerly examine um, Jesus every day. So that you know him and he knows you. Amen. 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 All right. Okay. We, we're getting there. We're getting there. Right. Now, if you haven't figured out yet, I'm trying to spell Jesus. So <laughs> we have our J right. Just do it. And then our E was eagerly examined every day. Okay. Y'all get it now? All right. You get it? You get it? Okay. So, so usually I have some moments the air up here. They'll be cheering me on. Like, okay. Give me like a J, an E, and an S. But, but, but here's our S. Okay. So let's go into uh, Revelations uh, chapter 12. And this is where me and Roy used to hang out at. Oh, me and Roy, we would talk about prophecy and scripture. Yeah. So, cha <laughs> so Revelations chapter 12. And what I want to look at here is that I want to talk about, you know, as far as how are you with sharing your faith? How, how is that going? Because I know some are better than others. And the reason I want to look at this is because when we share in our faith, what, what do you share? Do you, are you becoming like a used car salesperson where it's like, man, I got to try to sell this person on how to come to church or how to come to Bible talk, come to something I'm doing. Yeah, or how to get, you know, I got to put my, 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 you know, my, my sales pitch together. Or are you simply sharing with them your walk with Jesus. What do you think is more powerful? Your life, right? Because that person you talk to is going to be like, hey, this is a real situation. You, you're at work, you're at school, and you're going through something. And people know, okay, you know, people know when we're Christians, right? Yeah. Hey, Christians, then, okay, yeah, we know that you go to church and all that stuff. But when they see you going through something, they watch. They're watching. Let me watch and see how you get through this. And what are they seeing? Do they see you? Oh, well, it's me. Or do, you, do, do they see you? I'm trusting God. No, no, no. I'm going through a hard time here. And me being a Christian, me being a disciple does not mean that I'm not going to have hard times in this That's world. Right. Okay? That's, That's right. part of it. Jesus had hard times. That's right. So if he had hard times, why would not I? That's okay? Right. So I'm going to read the scripture. This is in Revelation uh, chapter 12, verse 7. And it says, starting in verse 7, it says, then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon uh, and his angels and, and fought and the dragons and the angels fought back. Verse 8. But he was not strong enough and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accused them before our God day and night has been hurled down. They triumph over him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. You triumph over Satan yes. through Jesus, the blood of Jesus yes. and your testimony. Yes. Your testimony. See, nobody has a story that, but you. That's right. Nobody has your story but you, how you met Jesus. Right. You know, what you went through and, what, and maybe what you're going through now. But that's what Satan wants from you. Yeah. I got to keep you quiet. Remember how I had Brittany and Sierra up here? Yeah. And it's like, okay, don't let them talk. Because they talk, there's power. When you talk to people and you share your story, the, the story that only you have to share, yeah. using the scriptures, there's power in that. Yeah. And Satan does not want that to happen. That's right. Even when you're going through hard, challenging times and you share with one another things you're struggling with here. But they see the power when, because God's not going to leave you there. Yep. He is going to rib you. There's going to be power. Come on. It's going to come in a matter of time. He's going to do it. How powerful, more powerful would it be when others see that That's right. in your life? Yeah. We're not perfect people. Mm -hmm. We go through things. We have things in our lives. But, yeah. but, God, but it says here that through the blood of Jesus yeah. and through our testimony. That's how God wants to use us. Amen. Because, because there was war in heaven, right? So there's a battle going on that you do not give your testimony. If you look throughout the, uh, the first century church, you see many times in the book of Acts, Paul was sharing his story. 
you know, Paul was sharing, here's what happened to me. Here's where I met Jesus. And here's what I was doing when I met him. That's a powerful story. So with, with you guys, is that what you do when you're at work, at home, with your families? You know, it's important that you share that with them because it is a war going on that you do not share that testimony. Because it is powerful. Amen? Amen. 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 So right now we got our, so we, right now we got a J-E-S so far? Okay, so you got to, right now we talk about how you got to share, you got to share your testimony. Okay? Now we got a you. Now I hear my brother Daryl talking about this. You, we got to be unified. That's right. We got to be unified. Go to uh, John chapter 17. Okay. Uh oh. Y'all know where I'm going. Yeah. Come on. This is probably one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. Yeah. And I'm here, <laughs> my wife says she knows yeah. it. <laughs> But in John 17 here, and this is at the very end. Now, here's why this is my, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. Because, you know, Jesus, um, this is, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane before he was about to go to the cross. Hours before he was about to go to the cross. And he's praying about the things that are important to him, that are on his heart. And he's praying about us. Here uh, in, in chapter 17, I'm going to start here in verse 20 of John chapter 17. It says, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. When Jesus is saying this, he is praying that, Lord, let, let, let us commune. Let us have a relationship, you know, with, with my people, with, with us. Let's have a relationship. I'm praying for them that they have a relationship with us. And do you know what that relationship with us is? What keeps us unified? Because he's talking, and let me go a little further. He says, I have given them the glory, here in verse 22, I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I and them, and you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you have sent me and have loved them, even as, I have loved, even as you have loved me. He's saying here that, that there's power in our relationships. Yes. In that unity with us. That's right. He says, because of that, the world will know yeah. that I'm the Lord. Come on, because man. of that unity. And what unifies us, brothers and sisters, is that spirit. Jesus is in us through, his, through the Holy Spirit. On, he is with us. That's the thing that, that's common amongst all of us. Yeah. That profess that Jesus is Lord. Yeah. He, he, he gave us his spirit. So even when we don't want to be unified, yeah. we're tied into the body. We can fight yeah. it. Yeah. But God is calling us. Yeah. He's, he's calling you back. Hey, come on back because you are a part of something bigger. That's right. Now, Satan, he doesn't attack. Uh, 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 he doesn't attack the crowd, does he? No. He tells that he's he, like the Bible as a, as a as a lion, a roaring lion. Yeah. And he's going to sit back. And what he's going to do, he's going to look for you to get by yourself. Because yeah. Yeah. like like just like Gerald talked about this morning, when you buy it, you separate it. You're weak. That's right. And he can beat you up all day long. That's Matter of right. fact, as long as he gets you going this way. Let me just take you further on back. That's right. And you're going further and further away. Right. But when you're with the group, when you got help around you, he's like, man, I better not go over there. Because you know Mark Harris is going to say something. <laughs> you know somebody's going to say something. Or they're going to tell you something. So just know that, you know, the unity that we got to have, that's what keeps us. And Jesus prayed about this. So, you know, this is like a will. If, how many, I'm a lawyer, so how many of you guys got wills? So people got will here? So when, you, when you're writing your will, you're writing that knowing that, man, these are things that, man, I got to make sure happen with my family. These got to be taken care of because when I'm not here with you, sitting here next to you, I'll, there are certain things that I want to make sure are done that you're taking care of. So if he's doing that, the night before he's going to the cross, one of the most important things he's talking about is our unity. Where does that fall in your heart? Jesus, one of the important things he's talking about, Lord, Father, let them be unified. And he's praying for us. Our Lord, you know, it's humbling to me. Our Lord and Savior going through everything he's going through and he's down on his knees. He's praying for us. Yeah. Lord, let them be unified. Because in those last days, like uh, me and Royal talked about in Matthew 24, the love of many will grow cold. Yeah, that's right. The Bible says that. In the last days that we're living in, people used to love you. They won't love you anymore. Yeah. Sometimes for no reason yeah. or for whatever reason. The love of many will grow cold. It'll happen in your families. It'll happen with your friends, people amongst you. But we have to continue to love. We got the spirit of God in us. On, we got to continue to love and, and, and that love will show through and let the world know right. 
that we serve the Lord. We serve a, a God who's powerful and bigger than all these things. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right, so we, so we got our you. We got one more love to go. All right. Now, am I speaking on Jesus the right way? Yeah. Okay, okay, y'all, y'all, okay, y'all keep me. Y'all, y'all make sure I'm not adding the S or, or I'm missing. <laughs> but uh, um, let's go into uh, Luke chapter two. Now, this is this is kind of a Christmas scripture because I don't, I might not be here at Christmas time, but I'm gonna get y'all early. Okay. <laughs> but it's uh, Luke chapter two. And uh, we'll start in verse eight. Let me get here. And I want to look at this because, you know, sometimes we forget that we needed to be saved. See, we can take for granted our relationship with God. We can take for granted what Jesus came here to do, you know. And, and when you take it for granted, that's when you can walk around and go a whole day without talking about Jesus. That's when you can go to a church and the word Jesus is never even mentioned. His name is never mentioned. There's places like that you go to. It's not even mentioned. Um, it doesn't even cross your heart at all. See, but that's, a, that's somebody who, I got this. I'm on top of this. This is all about me. See, just, you, you have no need for a savior. You know, it's, it's like, hey, I, I'm not worried about it because I, I totally got this. Well, let's, let's look at this because, see, sometimes there are, there are things that God puts in place or other things to let us know that, oh, yeah, you needed a savior. We, we saw in Revelations where there was war in heaven. Yeah. Well, that war includes you, okay? So, so just so you know, that war, it was about you. Now, Jesus won. He won. He got the victory. But you still have a defeated warrior coming after you. That's right. Come on. Because he needs to take your testimony, right? Come on. See, so that's why he's trying to do it. But, but let's look here. See, because sometimes we just got to know here in, uh, in, in Luke chapter 2, verse 8. And again, this is our Christmas, Christmas scripture. So Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> and uh, I'm saying this. Y'all see me again for Christmas, but I want to say. <laughs> but um, in Luke chapter 2, it says, uh, and I'm starting in verse 8, it says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in a cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company, verse 13, a great company of heavenly hosts appear with the angels, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those of whom his favor rests. They're talking about us. Now, what's going on here is these shepherds are out there, you know, in the field and, and all of a sudden, just flash, I guess, they see this angel. And he's telling them that, what's going on? He's telling them that today, today, a savior is being given to you. Amen. Today, he's, and even though he came as a baby, he was, he was like, no, today a savior is, so why do we need a savior? And again, if you knew about that war in heaven, see, we'd never been able to have to see hell. God doesn't want us to see hell. That's right. Now, we, we've had some people that go to hell here on earth. God does not want that. That's not what he wants for us. Nope. He wants us to have live in peace and live with Jesus. That's but, right. but, here, but here, as we see, it, and this, these angels appear, it says um, in verse 13 about that heavenly host. Mm. You, you, you ever seen a party going? Like, y'all are partying up here this morning. Yeah, I saw yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah, have a good time up in here. Okay? <laughs> and, and, you know, yes, and, and Mark be leading the way. See, when I, when I see it, I said, that's Mark Harris. When I walked in, I said, that's, that's, all. <laughs> that's all Mark. But see, that's what the angels in heaven were doing. Man, they were rejoicing. You, you ever had somebody be happy for you about something? Come on. Yeah. They're like, man, I know you didn't see this coming, but man, you're going you're gonna to be all right now. Yeah. It's going to be good. Yeah. Come on. That's what the angels in heaven were doing. Like, hey, man. And you may not even understand. Why are they saying that? It's like, no, man, some good things about to happen. Yeah. You just don't know what you've been saved from. Yeah. And brother says, that's why we got to get in the word. Because the word tells us, you know, what we have. Satan doesn't want you to know this stuff. Come on. He doesn't want you to know that you need to be saved. He wants you to think that it's okay for me to keep doing what I'm doing and living my life yeah. until that day you leave here. Mm. Because the day you leave here and judgment comes on you. Because judgment's happening in our lives right now, really. Right. Judgment's happening now, how we live our lives. Yeah. 
so that's when the book is closed. You know, so you want to listen to the word of God. Let it let it change your heart. You needed you needed a savior. And he got up on that cross and he went through everything to get there because Satan did everything to stop him. He didn't have to do it, but he got up there and he gave up his heart. He, he suffered everything for us. And at the end, he said, it's finished. He said, it's finished. He said, I did it. He said, I'm your savior and I've completed the job. Now, what you got to do, is you got to believe that. That's right. You got to believe right. that as you live your daily lives, you got to say to yourself every day, it's finished. Why am I letting this sin beat me up? Why am I letting this thing keep me from getting baptized? You know, you know, you know, you know it, it took, you know what? Let me, let me share. I'm going I'm to close this out. But you know what? It took me, well, I'll say a month, but really a year to get baptized. Now, my mother's here this morning. You see my mom in the back there? Yeah. And my, my, my beautiful mom back there. And um, I remember a year before I went out to go to school, um, the law school, University of South Carolina. And I, I was watching TV and I saw where, huh, this guy's talking about me being baptized. And I'm like, well, I thought I was already a Christian. You know, I thought I'd already, you know, I was going to church and doing different things. So I went to my mom and I said, uh, Mom, you remember, I don't know if you remember this. I said, was I, uh, was we, were we baptized? And she said, well, as a baby, you know, you were sprinkled. And I said, well, I, I, I understand that, but did I ever as an as a adult or somebody knowing what I was doing? And I said, no, I hadn't done that. And so in my mind, my heart, I knew that, man, I got to do something. But I kept fighting like, but I'm a good person. I go to church. I don't I don't bother anybody, you know, but but then somebody came to me and started showing me the word. Somebody met me and said, hey, let's take a look at this. <laughs> y'all know the people. Y'all know, know who studied with you. Let's look at this again. And when I looked at it and, and I'm a good lawyer and I'm good at what I do because I fought it for a good month. <laughs> But at the end, I did. I put up a fight for about a month. But at the end of the day, it was, um, I was fighting God. Yeah. It was like, it's no way around this. Right. I said, Jesus himself was baptized. <laughs> so there's no way around this. But what I'm trying to say, whatever in your life that you're dealing with, brothers and sisters, this morning, you got to get into the word. Yeah. You got to get into the word. And if you need help, we got people around us to help. Yes. We're, that's why we're a body, why we're unified in these things. Yes. Amen? Amen? Amen. Well, thank you, guys. Amen. Amen. Love you, brother. Oh, man, thank you. Amen, family. We've been fed this morning. Brother, thank you so much for your words. Uh, I'm inspired. Um, I've been a Christian nearly 40 years, and I feel like now I'm, 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 I've been rejuvenated and ready to go. Brother, you have come and moved me. And I know if you move me, you move them. Yeah. You move them. Thank God for your words. I want you to know I'm already looking for another building because we ain't got many seats left. And I hope you have inspired us to keep opening up our minds. Well, you see, you know, that um, there, I got elders here this morning from Palm Beach. Can you stand up there, Lawrence? Lawrence and his wife Delma. Delma, amen. Delma. And uh, there's Ken and Amy Sessions. Who well, elders they moved there? They're in Jacksonville now. Well, be praying for us too, because we've been looking um, to find a, a building there as well. So our prayers go out because I know we've talked about it for many yep. years. Yep. And so, but it's a good problem to have. It's Amen? a good problem to have. Amen. 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 Well, again, thank you so much for your words. Thank you so much for everything, Dan. Thanks Amen. so much for your love Amen. and for some of your love for us as a church, Amen. as a body. You might be gone here and there and everywhere, right. but you know where home's at. I know where home's at. Let's make, is there anything? Are we in, anybody any confused about that? We know where home's at. We might let you go over there for a little bit. You might can even stay for a little while, Amen. but you know how to come back. Amen. And Amen. we're looking forward to seeing what God continue to do Amen. with you, Amen. with us. As a unified body of Christ. Amen, Amen church. Amen. 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 Come on up, Royal. Okay, great. Amen. One of our elders is going to say a few words, and after that, we've already got our kids back. You'll be checking them out from the back, but we're going to close out uh, with a song.
Because we love to praise the Lord. That's the name of the song. Amen. Amen. Let me help. They got me at the door. I hope I did it. I think I did it right, bro. Okay. Well, this is Dan. Let me give a hug. Oh, Dan stuck down on Dan. That's a hug. No, that's all right. Okay. I'll come up. Okay. Oh, he coming back okay, to Okay, great. All right. That's my brother. All right. Amen. So come when you call. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. God be the glory, brother. Amen. Amen. So I am very grateful to be able to respond to Dan's message. You know, it's just, off, it's just like how he said in the very beginning, the hearts that we need to have. Because you say so, Lord. Yeah. That's the hearts that we need to have. Yeah, that's right. And Jesus said, look, just do it. Yeah. Yeah. And our response is that needs to be just because you say so, Lord. Yeah. No matter how tired we may be yeah. or how may, uh, disoriented we may be, yeah. we need to say because you say so, Lord. Yeah. Amen. And look at the benefits of it. Yeah. Come on, bro. You know, and Dan also said that, you know, if you're not in your word, you don't know Jesus. Yeah. That's the only way. Yeah. There's no other way to have a relationship with God, with God, with Jesus, if you're not in your word. Yeah. You have to be in your word every day. Yeah. We have to eagerly, eagerly, yeah. what to eat, yeah. Yeah. examine <laughs> your scriptures every day. Yeah. Ex ex eagerly examine Jesus every day. Amen. So thank Dan, thank you so much for your words and wisdom Amen. and just helping us to see and how to really spell out Jesus. So thank you, Dan, once again. Brother, I'm just excited that you're here, that I'm, I'm in your presence. We talk a lot, but it, there's nothing like having my brother with me, Amen. even though we Amen. speak a lot. Amen. So Amen. Thank you, Dan, once again. Give me another hand, please. Amen. 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 On to our announcements. Um, for the month of April, we had a great midweek lessons with um, Nasir and Ken Amen. giving great midweek lessons. Amen. And thank you so much for doing that. Is that you cannot grow without change. Amen. And it's been an amazing to have a, a father and son uh, team yeah. uh, deliver that message for us. Yeah. And then we have Grandpa come up coming up from the rear, doing Sunday school for the month of April. Amen. And that was uh, Daryl just talking about our Sunday school lesson. Thank you for uh, just how uh, the message was just keep heart. Is that correct? Keep heart? Take heart. Take, take, heart. Take, heart. take heart. Thank you for that message once again, Daryl. So thank you guys for the month of April. You did a, a tremendous job. Yeah. Moving on to the month of May. Uh, this May we will have Jamie and um, Brian. Brian be doing our midweeks for the month of April. Amen. I mean, month of May, I'm sorry. For the month of May. Also for the month of May, we have our Friday night devotional, May 3rd. Come on. And Amen. Jamie, Jamie will be leading that as well. Amen. And I think that's all we have for, uh, for the month of May. Is there anything yep. that we're missing? Oh, Mark will be back here. <laughs> May 5th for the month of May. He's going to be bringing the word. He said he can't wait. He said he can't wait. So we're we we waiting for him. <laughs> waiting for him to bring the message. But uh, I think that's all we have. Yeah. For, for, yeah. Okay, uh, you want me to close up with prayer now? Yeah, you'd be doing Sunday school. Oh, uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, for, May, yeah, for the month of May, that's right. I'll be doing Sunday school. And I'll give you the title then. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Let, me have, let me have all our young marriage stand up before you pray. All the young marriage that was in the young marriage class, stand up. Stand up. There you go. There you go. Amen. Let me have Sal and Patrice stand up and Vanita. Thank y'all so much for teaching that class. We had a young married class. Some of these guys just got married and uh, did a great time. Uh, just spent a great time teaching. We had an eight-week series helping them. And just thank y'all so much for participating, being a part of it. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing your marriage continue to skyrocket. Amen. Amen. In August, we're going to do our seasoned marriages. <laughs> Season. And that's going to be Royal and myself and, and uh, uh, our wives, Vanita and Rochelle, and also Daryl and Prime are going to participate in that with us also. Daryl and Prime have been married 46 years. We've been married 36 years. And they've been, y'all been married, how long? 24. 24 years. So you add that up. We got about 100 years in there. We, I think we can help our season. 
I think we help our seasoned ma marriage get through some things. Amen? Amen. And we look forward to that uh, and our devotionals. I'm, I'm just so proud. And those who are going to, uh, uh, let me have uh, Jamie and uh, Brian stand up. This will be teaching our um, midweek this week. Amen? <laughs> for the month of uh, May, for the month of May, re remain standing. What's so cool about this, we just had a father and son teach uh, midweek. Uh, um, where's Ken and, and uh, Nas? Stand up. We just had our father and son teach our midweek. And amen. We're so encouraged by that. Jamie has <clears throat> been a Christian a long time. It's like a, a, a little brother to me. Played in the NFL. Done some, God has blessed him tremendously. But Jamie met Brian. How many years ago? Fifteen. And I, I remember uh, them having them over. Stand up with your, your wife stand up next to you. Th through football. The kids playing football, having them over to our house. And I was so proud of, of this couple. They had a lot of questions. And they just opened wide about what was going on in their lives and the questions they had about the Bible. And then they found Jesus. And now that young man will be teaching our midweek this coming up. Yeah. And Jamie, what I love about Jamie, he's been a brother to me that um, wherever needs in the church, he's going to take care of it. No question asked. Don't need a question. Just tell me the need, Pastor, so we can get it done. He's my Barnabas in some. I'm just so inspired by you, brother. And what God, that's why God continues to bless you with harvest all the time because your big heart. You're not only a great giver, but you're a great giver of yourself. And may God continue to bless you, my brother. Yeah. If I can get all my singles up here, and then I'm going to have Royal uh, uh, close out with a prayer, and then we're going to finish our service with a song called, We Love to Praise His Name. Because we love to praise His Name. Amen, church? Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time, God is good. I'm going to need you to move me. God is good all the time. and all the time God is I am good. 60 plus years old. Make me walk on water. God is good all the time. All the time. God, God is good. Oh, family, you fire me up. Yes. You fire me up. What's yes. the other saying you taught me, brother? It's time. It's time. Let's go. Oh, family, it's time. Let's go. Your elder and your preacher don't let me have more foul than you. Family, it's time. Let's go. To sing, to pray, and sing this final song. Yes. Amen. Give God his glory. Let's all stand on this prayer. Stand on this prayer, and then we're going to have a song after the prayer. Amen. Oh, you got You already got him. Uh, is your. Uh, no. no, I got to use the mic. Okay, great. Thank Let's you. pray. Amen. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you, Father, just want to lift you up. Yes. Want to yes. give you all praise, all honor, and all oh. glory, Father. Mm. We just want to worship you today, Father. Yes. We just want to be able to say thank you. That's thank right. You. Thank you for your love. Thank you for everything that you do. Yeah. Thank you for sending our brother back to us, Father, you, so God. we can see him in person and hear yeah. the word, to hear what was on his heart. Yeah. Thank you so much, Father, that we'd be able to move to understand that without the word, we have no relationship with you, Jesus. Yes. Father, thank you so much for my brother once again, yes. for just being able to be my friend, to be my yes. brother, and to be able to encourage me yes. in time of encouragement. Dan is my Barnabas, and I thank yes. you once again, God, for allowing yes. me to put a, having him in my life. Yes. Father, I pray this word was able to penetrate our hearts, yes. that we was listening, that we was able to receive yes. what we need to receive. That's right. I pray that we heard what we need to hear, yes. and not only just, just, uh, just say, because uh, you say so, Lord. Yes. That's, that's the response, yes. because you say so, Lord. Yes. No other response. Yes. Just do it. Yes. God, we love you and we thank you and we pray all this in your son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Uh, Psalm number 722 in your Burgundy Psalm books. I love to praise his holy name. 722. Amen. Amen. 
722, I love to praise his holy name. I love to praise him, yes, Lord. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him, yes, Lord. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him, yes, Lord. I love to praise his name. Oh, I love to praise his holy name. Cause he's my rock. He's my rock. My rock, my, rock, my sword and shield. He's my will, He's my will. In, the in the middle of the will And I know he'll never, I know he'll never, never let me down, never let me down. Hallelujah, 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 
high up to praise his name. Well, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. high up to praise his name. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Well, high up to praise his name. Oh, 